and welcome back to my channel. This is Lisa Wabia, and today I'm going to be featuring my beautiful mother, Mrs. NJ Wabia. So, yeah, this is my mother. Mom, say hi. Hi, guys. Hmm. It was not easy to get this woman to do this, <laughs> to do this video with me. So, thank God I finally got her to do it. So, Mom, thank you for coming to my channel. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so, um, this is my mom tag with my mother, and I'll be, um, Asking her a few questions, you know, to get to know her. Also know how it has how it has actually been because nobody really asked their mother how motherhood has been or how motherhood had been for them. So today I'm going to be asking my mom a few questions so for you to understand and for me to also know some things that she never really told me about because hey, I will get married someday and become a mother too. So let me just exactly <laughs> exactly. <laughs> To be asking my mom a few questions. So, um, the first question is, what was the hardest thing about being pregnant for nine months? Oh, my goodness, having to be consciously watching out for the baby in the womb to make sure that the baby is fine. Since I cannot see the baby yet, trying to eat the best food that will be okay for the baby. I mean, trying to connect to the baby always to make sure I'm going to get a healthy baby. The consciousness, the um, the stress of oh, I've not seen this baby. Is this baby okay? The hus my husband always listening to my stomach to hear the sound of the baby, to, especially this first baby, to make sure that she's good. That's I mean, every day if I'm lying down. I will make sure, especially when she got six months, I will always lie by the side if I woke up suddenly and see that um, I was using my tummy to lie down, I will say, oh my goodness, please, please check if this baby is still breathing. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> Second question. Can you think of any good thing you enjoyed during those nine months? The good thing... Yeah, watching myself getting bigger, <laughs> trying to change clothes, yeah. watching myself from that slim fit baby becoming a belly, a big protruded a belly, fat belly mom. I mean, going to be mom, changing status from slim fit to a big belly woman that will soon give birth to a baby. I mean, changing status is one of the best things that ever happened to me um, during those nine during those months. months. Okay. Uh, trying to get attention because I saw that I changed my nutrition, my food pattern changed. If I cook and perceive the smell of the aroma of the food, I won't eat it. So um, I have to keep demanding. I had to keep demanding for this. I never liked amala, sorry, but I saw myself eating amala as the best thing I ever ate during pregnancy. I got attention. If I had pains in the ways I would want to be carried up, doted on, I don't know, but it was it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Being ready to become a mom, it was so exciting. It oh, really was, yeah. Good question. In your opinion, were all the things you heard about childbirth accurate or way or I had a pregnancy magazine where I studied about fetus in the womb, stories about moms and all the stuff. But at a stage, I stopped bothering about what people, what people felt about pregnancy and childbearing. Because, I mean, it was just between me and my baby. Personal relationship. Watching my baby grow, trying to touch my baby kick, do hand like this and give me that mark that will protrude like this and goes this way. So I really I can't just say when I, I was, was bothered about what they said. Said, yeah. but um um accurate, yeah. So, okay, but so, some of the things you hear. Yes, yes, because some of that babies move, yes, it was accurate. Yeah. That sometimes you'll be sleepy, you'll be getting scared. Oh, are they dead? It's also accurate. Oh, they do sleep in the bed. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you wake, they may be sleeping. 
when you are sleeping, they will be awake. Kick mm. you in particular will kick me here, kick me there, make me wake up. And when I wake up, and the worst is I can't bring you out to carry you and say, baby, sleep. <laughs> so I learned, yeah, I learned from the magazine that when the baby starts doing like that, you can rub your stomach. And when I rub my stomach, the baby will come down, kind of rocking the baby. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Um, the fourth question, mm -hmm. what was your hardest experience in pregnancy? My hardest experience, trying to um, make sure that I become the best mom, mm -hmm. not giving a steel bread, eating the best food, trying to make my health status positive so that my baby will be okay, trying to make sure that I don't eat nonsense so that I will not give nonsense to my own <laughs> baby. <laughs> Trying to change my pattern of feeding, yeah. my lifestyle, like to eat food, you know. Although I had to sleep enough, I had to exercise. Even when I want to sit, I had to go around to make sure that the baby feels good. I mean, the hardest thing was trying to adjust, trying to adjust from whatever lifestyle I had to make sure I am a good mom that will give birth to a healthy baby. Yeah. Following the doctor's prescription, one, I hate taking medicine. I'll be giving um, iron medicine, all those tiny things. I'll feel like throwing them under the bed. When I remember that I just want my baby to be good. Fifth question What has been the hardest thing about being a mom? Because you know, oh, being so. your assistant in sister's mom in the house, I know how many times I've passed. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh goodness! Oh goodness! <laughs> I know how I pass my things to leave the hardest. I became a slave, yeah. trying to make my children, giving them the best training, the best in everything. Yes. I removed selfishness from my system and became a selfless servant in my own home. I tried to train you oh, very to hard. make you part of the process. So that when I give you the best training, you can always impact your younger ones. But you saw me as your worst enemy then. <laughs> one I day, you packed your days, you were living this Not house. only one day, there were many days. The other days. day, mommy, are you sure you gave that to me? As in, it was like, mommy, it was this is wrong. This is it, was, it was too, it was too I much. Said, I'm training <laughs> you so you'll be good for the others. Yeah. And I am good because look at you. Yeah. Just look at you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay, so, so that's just my mom. Eh? <laughs> my mom. What has been the most rewarding thing about being a mom? Yeah. Having you guys as <laughs> yeah. my family. Yeah. Oh, Lisa, my hand is paining. Oh, mommy, mm. where? Oh, Kennedy, my back is mommy. Let me massage you. Oh, no. I can't get up. I'm fainting. Please, what do you want from me? Just let me help you. We love you. We don't want anything to happen to you. We just feel loved. Yeah. What else can I need? But I thank God because it's God's blessings for me. Yeah. And I pray for all mothers out there who have worked very hard to bring up their children in the best way they could. To also be blessed. I mean, having the best from their children. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. my prayer. Amen. Amen. What was the most surprising thing you discovered about being a mom? Because you know you are the mom, you are a mom, you are a mom of four kids. So what was the most surprising thing you discovered about being a mom? Um, the most surprising thing I discovered, I, dis I mean, I dis discovered, discovered yeah, about, being about being a mom is um, knowing that I have much love in me. Enough. Enough. When I was growing. I thought whatever I was doing was just um, a normal lifestyle, like helping out people to solve their needs. It was when I became a mom, I realized my potentials, and I could, I did not wait to impart them into the children, not just the children, children, but all the children that come around me, yes. all my students, all my pupils. Anyone that has come around, yes, yeah, she's, she's a teacher. You guys, <laughs> she's a teacher. I just realized I have overflowing love, and um, you know, it's an endless thing. Yeah. I mean, everybody will be on me at the same time, sure. 
trying to be loved. Yeah. Mommy, I know you love Kennedy more than me. That's why you're not <laughs> Kennedy. Mommy, I, I don't know, know how to share Asha. my mother's love. Please, it's not my your fault. Passion. That's why you didn't do it. It's not Jennifer. my fault. Uh, mommy, I can see who you hate more. I know everybody hates me, even my mom. I was able, by God's grace, yeah. to coordinate all this and became super, even in my husband's life as well. Yeah. I realized that, I mean, I had so much and I have so much to give. Yeah. And I kept giving and I'm still giving. Yeah. And the result is endless. Yeah. I'm satisfied. I'm grateful to God. That's what I discovered that yeah. I have much more. So, what is the best memory you have involving your child? Or like Is there are so many. I mean, there should be. There should be. First, you yeah. calling me. Yeah. Mommy, I called you. Well, what age was that? Going to eight months. Eight months, mommy. I know you told me that I sang happy you birthday. You sang your happy birthday, birthday song. Yes. Happy birthday to me. At age one. At one. Yeah, at one year. Yeah. You started talking at eight months. So I'm sorry, but that's the truth. <laughs> oh yeah, you called me mom, and I smiled, made my day. I've seen all my children yeah. achieving a lot academically, yeah. and the training I gave to you, I put all of you, I took you back to God. Yeah. I grew all of you to God. I was a chorister in my father's house. I married. I put all of you into the church. Everyone in my house, all the girls in my house are all I'm choristers. choristers. Yeah, I'm a chorister. I'm still in praise and worship ministry. Yeah. And charismatic. Yeah. So even anyone wherever you are in the school, they are all choristers. Yeah. Back home here, they are all choristers. If you've watched my video, my sister tell you see that my sister and I, Jennifer, we talk about going to church that's choir in church. So we are all choristers from the first daughter to the last that's where three girls so yeah and seeing my children behaving like me i don't know how i behave though but seeing them being calm like adults that i see youth yeah. makes me happy makes me happy it's god's grace really just thank god for everything yeah thank god because you know being your <laughs> brain under your hand, mommy, it was not easy. It was good. Yeah, it was good it for was you. Good. It was good for her, but not my but mom not for me. <laughs> was a teacher. Yeah, she taught all of us. If you don't, then in those days, if you did not attend by practice, you will not wear robe. You will not robe to sing. Mm -hmm. That means when it's time to pay school fees, you'll be the last. They must send you away from school before your school fees will be paid. I did not practice that with you guys no, because no. those days are gone. Well, but I did other things to make sure that. So, if I was hard on you, you wouldn't have been what you had to do. You are a, an engineer. Yeah. Look at you. So, I'm grateful. I can't believe I'm blushing for this, my mom. You. I'm grateful to God for you. Yeah, thank yeah. God. Thank God for everything. Yeah. So, bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. And I'm happy for all moms out there and those that are yet to be moms, do your best. Describe me as a child, you know, as a great child. Mm -hmm. Restless. From the womb, you were restless. <laughs> out, restless. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I will take you to church after I had other siblings of yours. I'll carry the newest baby. The other one will be there. You will get lost. They'll be looking for you everywhere. <laughs> At age three, four, you are restless. Growing up, restless, confused. But it was kind of a process. But you still got by. I mean, growing up, being the first, having all the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Trying to um, be yourself and be what I want you to be. Being a mother. To, yeah, taking to care, doing siblings. your own and doing your younger ones yeah. and trying to make sure everything is fine. Especially when I leave the house for you and your younger ones, trying to make sure everything. So it was um, a kind of it was stressful, but it was very stressful. Oh, yeah, but it was. well, you didn't remove you being. <laughs> you 
no, no. Restless. <laughs> Your restlessness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know when it disappeared. I, I think over the years I became calm. The radio I brought from my youth service because your daddy married me when I was seven. So from the um, from the youth service I came to his house. I took that radio. I left the relative, but I took that radio because it's two way. It can be dubbing and be playing. Yeah. You went and scattered the whole of that radio. It's mm. cassette, it's cassette player. You scattered everything. Dismantled, not to not um, those knots. You, you dismantled yeah, them. The screws. The screws. You dismantled <laughs> everything. Well, well, I told her to yeah, kill you. you. I said no. When she grows, she will buy me a better one. Yeah. That was how I ended it. Yeah. Our television, we will unscrew, bring out the screen, then that large screen one. Oh yeah, that box type. Yeah. Before we bought flat screen, we did everything. The table, everything that has screw, we must unscrew really? and screw back. You didn't even talk about changing, changing the lights. I'm burning everything in the house because I want to know how electricity works. Oh my goodness, it was too much. In all things, you still went to read the course that related to your restlessness because you are a renowned engineer and I'm grateful because it's paying off now. Yeah. Everything that has to do with um, electronics, internet, is how we do it. So, um, describing you, you grew up a normal child. Yeah, you grew up a normal, intelligent, very intelligent. Very intelligent. Your restlessness was also channeled towards um, creativity and trying to know. You kept trying to know. Yeah, you keep I, 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 I tomorrow. You keep trying yes. to know. You want to know. You want to know. You keep wanting to know. And it's a good one. So I mean, your growing up was healthy and it's still healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the third question. How have you changed as a person since becoming a mom? Um, I became more calm in my thoughts and in my decision, but I started shouting too much. In fact, it started giving me sickness. <laughs> and now I'm learning how to be calm. When I'm provoked, I take a deep breath and I'm when I take a deep breath and relax, at least I will come up with a calmer response. Mm -hmm. like when I was having new children, I was shouting like a mad woman. So, what changed about me is being calmer, more mature, understanding people, trying to understand why people behave the way they do. Because I have trained you children, I went through growing with, I went through your growth, all of you. And as to certain things and certain behaviors that were related to certain activities, especially you young girls and school and mates and all the stuff. So these days, I changed in the sense that I don't take people by their actions. I try to give excuse for whatever they have done, knowing that it could be caused by, uh, you know, if there are all combined factors. You don't just judge based on what someone does. It could be accumulation of the previous um, anything that may have gone through that person's life. You understand? Yeah. 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 I also learned to appreciate people more and try to love them. In fact, I forgive in advance yeah. before someone offends me. I always make sure I find an excuse to forgive someone's wrongdoing you know, to me. And I try to be at peace. Is people knowing that that is the only way to live long. When you are not at peace with people, you will be hurting. If I if I if I don't like you yeah. because you hurt, uh, sorry, because you did me something. Whenever I see you, I will feel on Yeah. When I feel on it, it's touching my health. Do you understand? Yeah. So I want to become at peace with people. Forgive so far. In fact, forgive in advance. I learned also learn to pray more knowing that with God all things are possible and whatever I am or I'm going to be or my children will be it's all about prayer yeah. and all about God it's not a question mm -hmm. but like I just want to know your opinion so lately there has been a lot of um, opinion towards um, exclusive breastfeeding mm -hmm. so what do you think is it a good form of uh, feeding for a baby or 
Should they just place the child on formula and other things? Ah, that's a good one. You, your brother, your sisters. I did six months exclusive. <laughs> children yeah. you won't fall sick it is advisable in fact um i don't know i don't have to force anyone but i advise every mother out there to do exclusive for their babies it makes the baby very healthy you won't fall the baby will not fall sick yeah. you won't have to be running up and down to look for um the hospital to, uh, to, to take your baby to and the baby becomes very intelligent and articulate and the baby will grow very healthy and wise. And it saved my money. <laughs> I didn't have to buy baby formula for the first six months. Yeah. And it saved me from carrying class, all this stuff. I had to just... That's a few. Yes, to six months exclusive. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, the last but not the least, that's the 11th question. What would be your advice for the upcoming mothers out there? Because a lot of people have. I'm sure somebody has been touched by this video, so. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Mommy is the chief drama queen. I'm not the drama queen in this house. <laughs> but wait, hashtag. Be real. Yeah. Be real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, my advice is pray. I may not be the richest person, but I have peace. I have peace of mind. Um, yeah. For you, upcoming mothers, enter into your new home, learning how to pray. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Don't go to that your friend that is eyeing you with sins, that has been looking for an opportunity to destroy you. Don't go to that your friend, because the, the heart is desperately wicked, I am telling you. If you have anything that is confusing, go to God in prayers. He will direct you. I'm talking out of experience. Again, be humble. Don't bring I know it all. It doesn't work in marriage. There is no particular formula for any homo. You enter and God will lead you and your partner and the children that will come and learn how to be patient. Then don't be quick to judge or to act so you don't make mistakes. There are so many temptations out there. Just try to hold your home. Your home is your base. Your home is always your base. Don't see your home as second best or where, nah, let me go. No, your home is your base. If you make your home your base, you will enjoy your family. <laughs> okay, mommy, thanks, thanks for basing my you know my channel today because yes. I used to get this this lady <laughs> Whatever. So, so you know thank you for giving us this wonderful wonderful if I don't even know what to even start from but you know I if, me personally I have learned a lot today and you know I say thank you you know is it the only that we pack you Okay, so that is it. So thank you for watching and you know don't forget to subscribe, uh, give this video a thumbs up, don't forget to comment, you know, share what you feel about this video, you know. <laughs> okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.